Sen mit dabei. 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 Sen So we're in a huge Israeli training facility called Seilin. And this facility is basically designed to help people learn how to deal with urban combat based on the schematics of Gaza. If you've ever watched a kind of dystopian sci-fi movie, you'll know that the future of the planet is basically one enormous city. And that's why urban warfare is so on vogue. Wars are no longer going to be held across large plains with two armies approaching. It's going to be sporadic and it's going to be in complicated, scary urban situations. As warfare moves into urban settings, conventional armies have struggled as insurgent forces utilize the density and irregularities of the city as a defensive terrain. After all, a traditional army can't march through tiny streets and as such, much of their battlefield power is negated. In Israel, conflict is an almost everyday occurrence. Battles with enemies like Hezbollah and Hamas were fought along the lines of traditional military combat with heavy casualties on both sides. That was until the second intifada in 2002, where Israelis fought in Nablus, redefining the very battlefield of war by using urban warfare combat techniques to take the city. The Israeli military, rather than using the streets, where troops are vulnerable to guerrilla tactics, did something much more surreal and superhuman. They began to walk through walls. Marked by a low number of Israeli casualties, this postmodern approach to urban warfare was heralded as a great success and embraced by Israeli military planners. But the combat resulted in very public civilian casualties and immense collateral damage. To train soldiers in the fundamentals of urban warfare, Israel broke ground in 2005 on the Urban Warfare Training Center in Seir Lim. Built with labor and significant funding from the US military, the $45 million facility is one of the largest and most technologically advanced of its kind in the world. This might look like an Arab town, but it's not. It's built by the Israeli Defense Force in order to make sure that their troops are the best urban fighters in the world. Modern warfare doesn't take place in open fields like it used to be, and we realize that we have to change the scenery that we train in. Do you have a fake name for this town? Yeah, it's called Baladia. Baladia. Yeah, uh, which means like a city in Arabic. So it's a real city with street lights and, and everything. This is the mosque in Baladia, your yeah. fake city? Yeah. Um, and unlike a mosque in Gaza, I guess, we can go in. Right? Yeah, sure. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's huge. 600 houses, one square kilometer in size. We're trying to, to make the city even feel like the city life and everything. We use the mosques to call the praise for five times a day for the daily praise. We gotta practice as real as we can get, as we'll see that in uh, real action. Baladia spans nearly 5,000 acres with all of the basic structures and amenities of a town. With the help of simulation experts, the chameleon city mimics locations in Lebanon, Gaza, the West Bank, or Syria, depending on the day. Here, the Israeli military practice and hone the latest techniques of urban warfare. This is weird. We're basically standing in the middle of a gunfight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Right now, they're just facing the first few uh, squads of the enemy uh, who try to booby trap some of the houses and... Uh... What, what are the booby traps? Do you mean just snipers waiting or, uh, or no, bombs or bombs, bombs in cars? Lots of bombs and snipers. That sort of thing we didn't uh, find in uh, modern armies, so we have to be updated all the time because if we won't do that, we won't win uh, the battle. <laughs> Training is vital. Israel may have gained the upper hand utilizing urban warfare techniques in Nablus in 2002, but it was Hezbollah, 
during the 2006 Lebanon War that proved to be better trained as they seized the advantage in villages and urban areas. It's about a half a mile between here and the town. They've got to make sure there's absolutely no enemy combatants en route. So slowly but surely, they're running forwards, uh, clearing the area, and then they're going to end up in the middle of a city, running up and down stairs, burn up walls, and uh, generally shitting themselves. What these guys are going through is effectively the future of warfare. Less and less are there going to be regular wars with two armies facing off against one another. Instead, it's going to be small squads storming cities and facing unseen enemies. Right, let's go. We're just coming over, and a sniper started taking no pot shots at us. So we had to dive into this trench. I'm not sure I'd fancy my chances of taking a city after running across this fucking desert. <laughs> so they've made it up to the town borders. The next step is getting in without getting shot. Okay, so the most important thing they're doing here is they're avoiding the streets. If you were in Gaza, the streets would be trapped, there'd be snipers everywhere. What you've got to do is basically make tunnels through the buildings. You've got to go through walls, over walls, you've got to break through into people's living rooms, bust their way through there. It's strange, it's where the private space suddenly becomes public space, it becomes the theatre of war. So they discover that there's a terrorist outside, so they're securing the building. So they've shut all the doors, they've got all the windows covered, and everyone's freaking out a bit. You have to be really sharp because everything is a threat. A window is a threat, stairs are a threat, the rooftop is a threat. So down there you can see the main road, it's the most dangerous place for these guys because there's no cover whatsoever. They're making their way from building to building, always avoiding open spaces. And that's, that's going to be the reality of the future. You've got to avoid the streets, otherwise you're going to be shot by a sniper. <laughs> So the objective today was to capture this guy back here in the t-shirt and he was playing the baddie. So they charged in, he started letting off some rounds, but then neutralized him. Urban warfare is actually the basic thing that we train for these days in the IDF. We see that most democratic countries not fight against each other, but against terrorist groups. Unfortunately, we have lots of experience, but we would prefer to gain most of our experience in training, not in fighting, obviously. But I think NATO and the US Army gained a lot of experience in the last few years in Afghanistan and Iraq, which is pretty similar. It's a change that will affect the entire Western world to build more facilities in order to, to prepare ourselves for the next war. The challenges are endless. I mean, the danger is endless. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, the urban fighting would be only for special units. But now it's come to day-to-day -day training. That's how 
biggest mission. It's, it's, it's wherever we go, whether it's Lebanon, if we go to Gaza, if it's to the West Bank, wherever we go, it's urban fighting. I've been here three or four times, and every time I've had this been a, an army from a different country coming to train. I've mean, seen the Marines, I've seen the UN train here. I mean, militaries from all over the world come and train here. The second you go into urban fighting, you just go into a wall, there are people above you. So you've got people above you, people behind you, people on the side. A person can be a meter away from you, and you won't know that he exists. So the danger and the challenges come from every single degree. What would you do if you go into a house and there's a woman there and she says that she's by herself and you have to go and you know that there's a bomb there. What do you do? Do you shoot? Do you not shoot? It's something we look to prevent in any case and in, in, in every price. But um, the one thing we have is to protect our lives. We as soldiers have a mission to protect our country and protect ourselves and to fight for anyone who's willing to come up against us. As long as they progress, we have to progress. And if we progress, they have to progress. And I'm 100% sure that all the other armies, all the other terrorist organizations that we fight against are progressing. And therefore, our tactics are also changing. So the, I, th I think the progression will never stop. Even with a new training facility and greater focus on urban combat, Israel might not be able to get the drop on its future opponents. As Israelis train in Seir Lim, Hezbollah continues to fight alongside the government in Syria, undoubtedly developing and learning new urban warfare tactics. How the IDF's training in simulated villages will measure up to Hezbollah's real-world experience is a big question. But what's certain is that urban warfare will continue to mutate and evolve in a response and counter-response cycle with no foreseeable end in sight.